Welcome to the chapter 8 of React Quickly book. In this screencast, I will walk you through the autocomplete project. This is a rather complex project. It has backend code, it has tests, it has persistence, and isomorphic or universal JavaScript rendering from the server side to the client side and on the client side as well. So first of all, I want to show you how to start this project. We are in the project folder. We have a few files here, we will talk about them more, and folders as well. S to start, I would use npm start. And uh, one thing to do before, so this is a new terminal window, I need to have MongoDB installed, configured, and running. And I need it to be on the default port of 27017. So I'm switching back and now I can safely launch npm start command which will launch gulp and the gulp has the development server. It's called nodmon. So nodmon will start the Express.js and Node.js backend and that backend will also serve the files for the front end. If you're confused, bear with me. Let's go and look at the web page. So this is local host port 3000 and you can see this uh, beautiful in input box. So you can think about it as a Slack or hip chat rooms and uh, or maybe in Twitter you have a bunch of hashtags. So let's say you want to use Node.js. Here we go. It opens in Node.js once you click on it. But maybe you want to use something like uh, Spine, which is a minimalistic front-end framework. But it's not in the list. You can add it. So now you can go to that room. And actually, if I refresh, I should be able to see Spine here. So I see Spine now. And uh, OK, so let's add Angular 2, because Angular 2 is coming soon. It's different from Angular 1. And again, if I'm refreshing, I see Angular 2 in Angular. So this means that the app is persistent. So let me go, go here and restart it. And refresh. Yeah, the data is there, so the app is persistent, the data is stored. And it's also rendered on the server on the first page load, and then the rendering is happening on the browser. I showed you how to launch the project, the final project, and uh, how it looks like. So now we can discuss and we can cover the folder structure. First of all, we have the test folder for our just tests. Then we have node underscore modules, that's where dependencies live. Then we have public. So the public folder will have the compiled files, the normal JavaScript files, and uh, the CSS bootstrap CSS file. Let's close it for now. And then SRC stands for source. That will be our source files, the JSX files. Files like app.jsx and autocomplete.jsx. So app.jsx will render and it will import and render autocomplete.jsx. And then we have build file where all those build files are live. So first we compile app.jsx into app.js and same thing with autocomplete. We compile from jsx to js and then we will bundle it up into the public folder public slash js slash app.js. So, what's up with the views? We're using handlebars here for server-side rendering, and we also render, will render React components from within that handlebar templates. That's because we don't have index.html, we don't have any HTML, so we have handlebars and React. Then we have gulp file, that's our build process file. We have index.js, that's our server file package.json and uh, rooms.json. So rooms.json is just for convenience, so you can automatically populate the rooms. 
and uh, if you look at the readme it shows you how to start the application so you need to start to do npm install then you need to launch gulp to start it and to test you would use npm test and if you want to see data what you need to do is say npm run seed let's go to package.json this is the seed file I'm using mongo import this is special command once you install mongo database and configure it uh, you'll get it it will be working don't worry about it and uh, it's rather long it has a lot of options if you want to dig deeper into them feel free to explore it one thing here is JSON array by default Mongo imports uses one object so if we don't want to import one object at a time we want to import an array we want to import multiple objects multiple rooms in our collections of rooms so that's why uh, you need JSON arrays that keep that in mind otherwise just use npm run seed and don't worry about it and then uh, we have uh, lots of dependencies most of them for the express.js server their middleware or plugins or packages or modules for express.js framework then we have uh, react and react dump version 0.14 please 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 don't use any crazy latest versions uh, I'm not guarantee that this example will work with them then uh, reflux that's what we'll be using as a data flow for our react UI views and then request it's a library both front-end and back-end for making HTTP requests so from our front-end application we'll be making requests to the our to our back-end Express.js and Node.js server and that server will get the data to the MongoDB dev dependencies include Jest, Gulp and uh, React add-ons because React add-ons test utils that's for the testing we don't need it in production Okay, so far so good. Uh, let's take a quick look at a uh, Gulp file before we proceed to coding our tests and then the component itself. So the Gulp file uses Browserify, Nodemon, Watch and React. So let's first look at the build task. This is the build task. In it, uh, we using we basically taken all the JSX files in the source folder in SRC. We uh, passing them through the React with the pipe interface, and then the destination is SRC slash build. So that's where the compiled files will end up, but that's not it. What we also need to do after we build the file we would need to take those files and uh, inspect them for dependencies we would use Browserify for that Browserify enables us to use NPM modules in the front-end code so basically it's a bundler it will uh, smartly manage all the dependencies so for example if we have two files requiring one module it will have that module only once and it'll, it will also do a lot of other good things but for now just keep in mind so we're taking that app.js and uh, we writing to the destination public JS and app will include the autocomplete so we don't do anything with autocomplete browser if I take care of all the dependencies for us then uh, the watch task uh, it enables us to use uh, this task and to use this processes like uh, compilation and bundling in the development mode so anytime there is a change the watch will trigger build and script and we are watching for the file changes in JSX only that's all we care about and then the last task is Nodmon Nodmon it's a standalone tool you can use it uh, you can install it with npm npm i-g Nodmon uh, this right here it's a Gulp plugin it's very similar to the standalone so what it does basically it gives us a reloader 
every time there is a file change will it will reload it will also give us the static file server uh, local web server for development which we can use to to run our application and uh, the way we're running it basically we need to specify that our entry point which is index.jsx that's our express.js app so that's uh, the app that we need to implement that will talk to mongodb and it will have routes and will basically uh, be a restful api so not mon replaces the node command it's just a better version of node with just Using node index.jx, we would have to restart it with node, mon node monitors all the changes and uh, we're good to go. So now the watch is watching for the JSX files and node mon watching for the server files.